Do you ever think about the research that goes into the stuff that we use every day? Pretty much everything we own contains a complex mix of materials that we have discovered, designed, and then developed. And all this is the result of material science. Material scientists study the properties of materials and how these properties are determined by the structure of the material and the different components making up the material. Okay, so even if early humans didn't realize that at the time, we could say that material science started when we learned how to extract metals from rocks and then shape them into tools and weapons and other things that we needed. The Bronze Age, around 3500 BC, was a major material technology shift, discovering that copper and tin could be combined for the much more superior metal bronze. Following the Bronze Age came the Iron Age, which was probably more important to our lives today. During the Iron Age, the best weapons and tools were made from steel, which is an alloy between iron and carbon. But there was a fine line to get the carbon concentration just right. Not enough, and the steel couldn't be heat treated as much and wouldn't be as strong. Too much carbon, and the steel became hard but brittle. So as you see, there was some science to get right already then. We just didn't call it material science. And the tools to make them have changed a bit too. One of the major steps for material science was the invention of plastics. The first completely synthetic plastic was called Bakelite. It was presented to the American Chemical Society in 1909 by its inventor Dr. Leo Bakeland. It's not hard to understand why moldable synthetic polymers so quickly became popular when we consider the alternatives we had before them. Ivory, for many reasons a terrible choice of material, used for things like pool balls and buttons. And then the material shellac, which was the substance secreted by the East Asian lac bug. It had to be scraped off of the trees inhabited by the animal before it could be used, for example, to coat electrical cables. Over the past hundred years, material science has moved forward at an incredible pace, sparked by things like space technology, medical advancements, and of course, our love for technology. One problem that had to be solved before the Apollo space missions was how to get energy. The result was to use the sun, and solar panels were invented. Also, new spacesuits didn't just mean the latest colors, but also improved materials. The new moon boot material later revolutionized running shoes when used as a shock absorbent. Advancements in medicines also called for new materials. By applying special coatings to medicines, we can now control where and when medicines are released in the body. And we also have new materials that can be drilled into the bone. And then we have all our electronic toys. Not too long ago, this was what we used for music. And now, all we have to do is slide and touch. Today's material scientists are fighting even bigger challenges, like how can we make sure future generations have the same chance to meet their needs as we do? Here we go. How can we keep growing without running out of resources? Materials that won't pollute the environment? Lightweight materials to cut energy requirements in transportation? Materials that can easily be recycled and put less stress on natural resources? If you want more specific examples, check out the other videos that we have done on some of the major questions that material scientists here at Chalmers University of Technology are currently working on and trying to find the answer to. And that's all for this time. See you soon.